right. So this is a song which answers the question, what is true happiness? How can you define happiness? Happiness is knowing the Savior and living a life within His favor. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Happiness is to know the Savior living a life within His favor, having a change. My behavior, happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me. Close relation, having a part. His salvation, happiness is the Lord. Real joy is mine, no matter if teardrops fall. I found the secret. Is Jesus in my heart? Happiness is to be forgiven, living a life. It's worth the living, taking a trip leads to heaven. Happiness is the law. Happiness is to know the Savior, living a life within His favor, having a change. My behavior, happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me. In close relation, having a part, His salvation, happiness is the Lord. Real joy is mine, no matter if teardrops fall. I found the secret. It's Jesus in my heart. Happiness is to be forgiven, living a life that's worth the living, taking a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Right. So true happiness is knowing the Lord. To live a life that He ple that pleases Him. That is true happiness is what the songwriter is saying. Alright, let's sing one more song. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening. Praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing. Praise you when I'm grieving. Praise you every season of my soul. We could see how much you're worth. A power, your mind, your endless love. Surely we would never cease to praise you everything that everything that everything that has breath praise the Lord everything that everything that everything that has breath praise the Lord Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, 
praise you every season of my soul. We could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love. Surely we will never cease to praise you. Everything done, everything done, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything done, everything done, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. All right, so we have with us somebody who is going to lead us in prayer. And that person is somebody whom we haven't called before, Catherine. Shall we pray? Okay. okay. Every eye closed, every head bowed, as Catherine leads us in prayer. Amen. Okay, so let's go into today's class, and this today's class is going to be on Luke chapter 11. We stopped at the sign of Jonah, and let's go back into uh, Luke chapter 11. All right, in your chat box, I'll put the passage so that you can follow me. Uh, Luke 11. Verses 33, sorry, 33 to 54. Okay, Luke chapter 11, verses 33 to 54. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. <coughs> your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee called him to dine with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, now you, Pharisee, clean, now you Pharisee cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give us alms those things that are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, and neglect justice and the love of God. Those this you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying these things you insult us also. And he said, Woe to you, lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourself do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they kill them, and you build their tombs. Therefore, also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel, to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. As he went away from there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. All right. So, it is war between Jesus and the Pharisees. So, first he starts talking about the light. Okay? And then when he speaks to the Pharisees, he is talking about the 
lack of light in their life. Okay, there is an absence of light, and what that darkness makes you do. He says, "No one who has lit a lamp puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand." See, whenever you know there is a now these days we have power cut sometimes. So when the uh, you know when summer comes also you will have power cut. So that time you will see that you know at night we actually light candles, and when you have candles. you don't actually keep it you know uh, hiding under your shelf or you know anywhere like that you actually put it on somewhere where the light will spread out and it will become a blessing for others also so that is why uh, lamps are used or candles are used now here the idea is that just as lamp should be displayed in the open so that all can benefit from its light the word and work of god the word of god and the work of god should be displayed when jesus displayed his word and works the religious people would not accept them see the religious folk will not receive it and that is what jesus is saying okay so jesus is actually saying um, uh, so some people actually saw the brightness and received it they were happy about it but some people were like these you know like these insects which are under a rock when you suddenly lift the rock the insects don't like it you also don't like it no sometimes you'll be sleeping and somebody suddenly puts on the light and it's so bright it hits your eyes and you say please turn the light off i want to go back to my sleep you know the same way when jesus shone the light in the darkness some people accepted it but many people rejected it they did not like the brightness they did not like the light because their acts of sinfulness would be displayed it would come out in the open and then they they would be called as sinners so they don't like that even the pharisees would be exposed so the pharisees also did not like his teaching so jesus is saying just as a lamp should be kept in on, on display and its light should be visible to everyone his work and his words are like the light of the lamp it will display the hearts and motives of people some people will accept it some people will deny and reject it they would not like to have the light then jesus says the lamp of the body is the eye see now jesus is saying a bad eye will make a person blind you no know? if you have a something wrong with your eye and you don't treat it properly you can actually develop blindness you know some people uh, you know they have this problem that uh, they could have actually used some uh, eye drops you know when they were young but they did not do that they neglected it they said oh ore kannile prashna illa endu nichu anga vittukale but later on it becomes a complication and they lose their eye eye sight they boom then will become blind same way a bad heart will make a person spiritually blind a bad eye can make a person physically blind a bad heart can make a person spiritually blind now jesus did so many miracles right in front of their eyes avaru kaange jesus actually fed 5000 people Jesus actually raised up a per- people from the dead. Jesus actually healed leprosy. Jesus actually gave a person who could not hear ears, a person who could not see eyes. Ingine illa ella miracles um Jesus cheyadu. And in front of their eyes he did so many miracles and people attributed his miracles to Satan and the prince of you know demons Beelzebub. The Jesus saying you had to be blind to attribute all these miracles to Satan. If you are ignoring the work of Jesus, then you are actually being a hypocrite. Okay, that's what Jesus is wanting to let them know. When one lives in darkness, two things are uh, you know uh, why why would a person want to live in darkness? Two reasons, right? Uh, maybe there is no light source. Maybe your uh, you know sun is not there, and that's why people live in darkness or uh, inability to perceive the light. inability to perceive the light that could be the second reason you can't uh, you know ulkollam pattana velicham varumbo nammada kannine prayasam varunnond some people don't like light he says uh, uh, some people are like that they they are because of their um, you know there is no light source they are finding it very difficult to and some people are they uh, because the light source is there and hurts their eyes they are not able to you know perceive things which are spiritual so jesus is asking them the question how is your eye is your eye having some disease are you having blindness then you would not be able to recognize the spiritual things that jesus is trying to communicate and sadly 
many of us today also have the same eye disease we don't have cataract we don't have you know blindness but we claim we don't we can't see or you know we can't understand certain things from the bible so that we can continue to live in sin so jesus is saying if if darkness comes from inside a person inside his heart then that will prevent him from seeing the light of jesus okay it doesn't matter how bright jesus is light is it doesn't matter how glorious his light is but if your darkness is coming from inside it will prevent you from seeing the light of jesus he can't see it see so a man without an eye uh, it's like he's like you know saying uh, there is no sun as far as light is concerned for him the sun does not exist if you are blind then sun does not exist same way a person who has darkness from inside would say oh the words of jesus doesn't make sense his words and works does not make sense to me so for him the source of light does not exist so some people want to make themselves blind by closing their eyes okay so this is what jesus is talking about a person's eye then he says if then your whole body is full of light having no part dark then the whole body will be full of light see when the light of god's word shines when the word and work of jesus is understood then one person the, that person will not walk in darkness he will not walk in spiritual blindness see when the light of god's word shines see that's why we are here you know wednesday and thursdays we are here to study the word of god so that once you understand the word then you would not repeat the evil that you are practicing see there was a tribe in africa which actually believed uh, you know uh, that uh, like we say cakes are very good and chocolates are very good they believed that other human beings flesh was very good and they lived as cannibals okay cannibals are people who eat other people so there is a tribe in africa which is cut off from uh, outside world they thought that you know it is okay to eat other people so they were practicing cannibalism and this was one of their tastiest foods so nobody can go inside that village because uh, they will look at you and they will look at you and they'll think okay in that the dinner is ready okay so if you visit the uh, that village you are finished they will make a chili a chili manu and uh, you know they will make ginger jo, jo and you know all those things and they will eat you and uh, they love eating you know fr- uh, new, fresh new 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 meat or new flesh so it was dangerous nobody could go there then the missionary went there and missionary some of the missionaries were immediately killed and they were eaten also but then later on the missionaries kept on going there and giving the gospel of jesus christ and these cannibals they changed they became people who respected god's creation they understood that you are not supposed to eat other people but you are actually tr- supposed to live with them ac- accept them and me, yes jo joy uh, yeah uh, it's like uh, all uh, all the takwa people aqua yeah. pe- yeah in dimaliet uh, they they killed uh, people yes. you remember that story yeah all right so yeah jim elliot was a missionary actually he and his friends actually went to the tribes in south america and they had the same problem they they also killed uh, jim elliot and all his friends they were very wild people and they got the gospel when jim elliot's wife and uh, the wives of those people who were killed they went as families and stayed among these people and they started evangelizing them and slowly and steadily the person who actually killed jim elliot became like a father to the uh, son of jim elliot you know and uh, the wings of something uh, um, i forgot the name of the book i read the book that is written by his son jim elliot's son where he goes to the tribe and he befriends that man who killed his father and it's an amazing story and uh, it's it actually the gospel of jesus christ changes the lives of people they turn from cannibals to become people who actually respect other people okay. yes killing people is not amazing really correct yeah the amazing thing is that they changed from killers they became good people that is what i call amazing killing people is uh, they did not know that killing was killing. sin they did not know that killing was wrong so they they grew up because inside them was the darkness was like that you know that they did not know that they were killing other people was they were was like you know hurting them so once the bible went there they understood that okay that is actually sin god does not like people to do that and then they changed so the amazing this, thing is that god changed them into human beings this this, this story my grandmother told me 
Oh, amazing! Okay, that's a movie also on that Jim Elliot and his friends movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, a book by uh, there is a book. Uh, Jim Elliot. The heading of the book is Jim Elliot. I think. Yes. Uh, on there is another book. Uh, I forgot the book's name. It's a, a glorious uh, splendor or something. His wife has written a book on the whole thing, and uh, oh. I think uh, the Gates of Splendor. That's the book. If you read oh. that book, it's the, the adventure that happened after Jim Elliot's story. After his death, yeah, they they get gifts. Aqua, aqua, uh, aqua people get gifts from the Malayet in yes. buckets. Correct, and they they throw it down from the planes, no? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they try to befriend them, and these people are killed on the first day they land itself. So yeah, yeah. first they they uh, see the gifts and. first day they they didn't come hmm second day they didn't come the third day they come yeah and they they, the then only, they get killed yes yeah. the name of the book is called through the gates of splendor through the gates of splendor yes that's the book that uh, jim elliot's wife wrote and it's an amazing book you should read it and there is another one called the spear uh the spear of something and that's actually by his son and how he you know struggled because his father died when he was a little boy and how he grew up you know in the tribe and how the tribe man the man who killed his father actually became like a protective uh, guardian for this child and yeah. You know, yeah that's a very very touching book it's actually the spear of some uh, the end of spear or something like that edge of spear or something like that and that's because uh, his uh, jim was killed uh, with a spear uh, yeah jim elliot was killed by a spear the man who threw that spear became like a father to this boy so yeah they sh- he should have thought you know like hindi movies and all he should have thought about revenge and taking revenge on that man because he killed his father but instead they became very close to each other and this man became a normal human being and he started loving jimeliet so much so yes and uh, yeah i, I remember jimeliet's son actually passed away a few years ago he had can- blood cancer and uh, i had met him once and uh, yes he he died of blood cancer okay so jimelet son is no more he's gone home yes so jesus was talking about um, what what the light inside you is darkness you know some people actually uh, uh, think through that wickedness that is in your heart and that blinds them from seeing the word of god and the work of god now let's go into this next part he says when jesus went into a pharisee's house he was invited to have dinner with them so there was uh, you know this increasing uh, fight between uh, jesus and the pharisees but jesus did not hate them jesus did not have grudge against them that's why he was able to eat with them he went to the house of a pharisee when he was invited for food so he did not uh, you know hate them in return for all the questions and all the attacks that they did he actually loved the pharisees and wanted to see the pharisees being saved so jesus went to the house of the pharisee and he sat down for dinner with that person now the pharisee got shocked because jesus did not wash his hands now that is not like saying you know jesus did not wash his hands hygienically nammal ka kaikkunna munbe kai alagathirana irikkunna because we don't want any germs to go in that's not the cleaning cleansing that is mentioned here the cleansing that is mentioned here is the ceremonial washing that every pharisee or a rabbi is supposed to have okay it is like uh, you have to pour water over the hands then starting at the fingers you have to start rubbing it from one end to the other in a ceremonial way seven times you have to wash your hands this is the ceremonial washing before um, you know you sit for your lunch or dinner uh, or breakfast you have to ceremonially wash one's hand okay now this is not there in the word of god the ceremonial washing of the hands you have to wash your hands before the service but this kind of ceremonial washing has been created by the pharisees okay so each palm has to be cleansed uh, you know by rubbing it over the other palm again and again from the wrist to the fingers and it's a ceremonial washing that jesus you know it was a long process and every pharisee enjoyed doing it because others would be waiting and watching him wash the hands so a strict jew would always do this before the meal okay now even if it is a small snack a jew would go to great lengths to wash his hands the rabbis were deadly serious about this now the you know uh, it is, there was like saying if you don't uh, wash your hands ceremonially then uh, it is like eating um, 
what do you call it uh, to- something from the toilet okay so that's how they considered that it is very much you know uh, for them it is unthinkable to eat uh, you, nobody thinks of eating what is in the toilet no so you said the same way a pharisee would never touch his food without ceremonial washing so um, jesus saw this as an opportunity to teach them something very very important and jesus said see the pharisees were so careful in maintaining the appearance of righteousness appearance of being clean so he said the 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 reality of it is that your inner heart is as important as your hands the external the outside of the hands is important you clean it up with washing but the internal heart is even more important and they were foolish ones why because outwardly they appeared to be clean but the actual dirt was on the inside of their hearts so jesus was he could see right through them like x-ray vision you know he could right see the, what is the pharisees thoughts so he told them external washing is okay but you should actually do internal washing that you guys are not doing so your hearts are as dirty as your that the uh, underside of your foot you know nammal cheripadadike nadakkumbo kaalin adil nalla brown color aayi vise when i look at your hearts i see the same dirt there so uh, what use is our external washing you know you put sanitizer and you wash seven times it is of no use if your heart is dirty so you are the foolish ones why because outwardly you appear to be clean but inside all the dirt is right there then he starts saying about woe to you okay woe to you woe to you woe to you he keeps on repeating that now jesus is not speaking harshly alone you know he is speaking harshly but this was a language not of you know he was not irritated because they found you know he is not uh, washed his hands in ceremonially he is actually giving a divine warning he is wa- giving a warning from god that god is going to hold you accountable for this one day when the judgment comes you are going to be held accountable now throughout the old testament prophets like isaiah habakkuk all these people have been warning these religious people he said take care of your heart take care of your heart take care of your heart heart is more important than your hands but these people give more importance to the hands and they don't give more importance to the heart so that is why jesus had to give them a divine warning woe to you woe to you what repeatedly he says that you know he says about tithing the mint you know there was this practice about tithing everything you know avare kaiyil kettuna paisa you know tithing means giving to the service of god okay giving to the temple of god whatever god blesses 10% of it should be given to the temple so they calculate everything that they receive they say okay paisa ada 10% food ari ada 10% uppinde 10% then mintinde 10% so everything this is you are so meticulous in giving 1/10 tithe for everything to god okay but the real sad condition is that you are hypocritical because you don't care about god's justice and god's love see so it you are distracted on very silly things you talk about why you did not give one tenth of the mint but you don't give your heart to god you don't give your heart to god see outward obedience is there that is what tithing means you know outwardly they were obedient to god's command but internally they were not giving even one tenth of their hearts to god okay i'll say it again they were giving one tenth of all their uh, you know savings one tenth of all their uh, you know wealth but they were not giving even one tenth of their heart to god that is what really mattered they were fi- finding fault with other people but they would not see the fault within their own heart that is what shocked jesus so jesus was telling them i'm warning you guys god is going to punish you because of this attitude god is going to punish you because you are not careful about the inside but you are very careful about the outside and that is not the right thing to do okay now <clears throat> imagine if the soldier is very very good in march past okay he is very good in march past he will come and stand very steady and he will salute the commander he say hey chen chen and he will say very straight salute and all so you say oh this guy is a very good soldier but the soldier is only as good as when he is in battle you know when you battle if you can't shoot straight when you in battle you don't have the courage to stand and fight the enemy then what how can you call that person a good soldier see so outwardly being good as a christian has no value unless you are 
internally you are allowing god to cleanse your heart and live a clean christian life see so as a christian it is more important to maintain your inner cleanliness than just your outer cleanliness okay physical cleanliness is important but give more importance to uh, uh, internal cleanliness that's what jesus is trying to tell us then these you ought to have without leaving the others undone see jesus did not say the tithe thing was wrong jesus did not say that spiritual things are wrong he said do this but do the other thing also see washing hands is good maintaining cleanliness outside is good but do the other thing also don't neglect the other see you know uh, there was there was a child who actually uh, you know started doing a lot of writing and studying one subject which he was weak in he loved that subject after a lot of you know teaching and all but he neglected all the other studies oh, that that is dangerous no you have to do one subject without neglecting all the other subjects also right so here jesus was saying tithing is good but don't neglect the most important thing don't do only this and not do the other thing so do both equally well then he talks about seats when you go to a congregation or a synagogue the pharisees always like to sit in the best place when they go to the marketplace they want to be greeted by other people and he was saying hey uh, you look for the best seats in a meeting you look for being famous and being recognized by people as a pharisee see so you think that recognizing yourself as a godly person is important jesus is saying no Rec- recognizing or living as a godly person is more important than being recognized as a godly person okay, i'll say it again being living as a godly person is more important than being recognized as a godly person see some people take their bibles to church and everybody will think that oh you are a very spiritual person but the question is do you read the bible at home do you study it if you don't read and study the bible at home taking the bible to the church is like telling other people you know miss uh, making them misunderstand that you are a christian see? yes jo what is said that being recognized as yeah. being rec- others recognizing you as a christian is not very important but god i mean you should be giving more importance to your personal spirituality you no know? if you don't read the bible but you still carry the bible because you want other people to think that you are a christian that is fake christianity christianity means you actually obey the lord in your heart and in your home that is where your religion starts no but uh, you you think that okay only out externally that your religion works no externally other people recognize you is not very important but god should know that you are a christian how when you read the bible at home and you prepare and you study the word you pray you know that that shows that you are a real christian and nobody will see it only god will see it and god will honor you but outside people should not you know look at you and say by looking at your bible and the way you pray and all this oh velli velli aathmiya nan oh velli spiritual person nan that is not very important okay recognized uh, being recognized as a spiritual person by people outside is not very important but we should be walking right with god even if others did not know that we should be walking right with god and that is more important now uh, you know some people actually like the best seats you know when you go to a meeting and all that you see celebrities sitting in the front seat or the main uh, the guest of honor being seated at the right in on the stage and then when you are asked to you know uh, go to the stage you want to sit right next to the main seat you know people are like that they think that you know knowing the celebrity or knowing uh, sitting right next to the uh, chairperson on the stage is very very important and jesus says that you know uh, trying to be famous like that that is this attitude is uh, something that jesus said woe to you okay look don't look for honor don't look for greetings they are not really important look for honor and greeting from god don't be a hypocrite that's what jesus was saying you know don't be a hypocrite hypocrite is somebody who's like an actor okay somebody who's acting a part and jesus exposing that there is a desire in our dark hearts sinful hearts to become an actor in front of other people you know we want to act like a spiritual person and jesus says woe to you woe to you if your attitude is like a hypocrite if you want to be an actor in spiritual things you want to act in front of people that you are a spiritual person be very very careful woe to you jesus says you will be you will be dealt very severely by god now jesus gives an example you are like graves which are not seen and people walk right over them 
you know when uh, i was growing up uh, i was uh, i used to visit during vacations i used to visit my mother's family you know mother's house and they they my grandmother and all lived in a place which was very much uh, like a village very 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 distant from the t- cities and towns it's almost uh, i think it's almost 30 kilometers right away from the nearest town okay so it's far away from the city and um, they live in a place where the house is in one place and right next to the house is a church so we used to play in the church compound okay there is no walls it's called a mission compound there is no walls between all the houses there are no walls and the church also does not have any walls uh, uh, you know uh, covering it so right next to the church there is a cemetery there is a graveyard so me and my friends you know we will go to the graveyard and we'll play in the graveyard and in that graveyard you know there was one day when we went there there was actually a funeral service going on one person had died in the church and they brought that person's body and they were going to pray and b- bury that body so we were standing there and we were watching this so <clears throat> unknowing to us we were actually sa- standing in a place where there was no grave okay so you know you can't you can't stand on graves that is like showing disrespect to the dead person so we were we could play on the graves we could run on the graves we could do anything on the graves but when a funeral service is going on there we were very careful you know if the priest or somebody from the crowd saw us they would shout at us so we were very careful not to stamp on the graves once the funeral was over the girls who were in our group they went and took all the flowers from that fresh grave okay and then we ran and played on that on that grave also okay so was that respectful not at all okay but when the people were watching us we were respectful when the people all left we were disrespectful you know jesus actually using that as an example you know when people walk on graves without knowing they are actually showing disrespect to the person who is there right so the the same like that the spiritual leaders were like dead graves which means they actually uh, you know uh, their understanding was that if you touch a grave or the grave clothes or the dead body of a person then the jew becomes unclean that's according to the old testament law okay i will give, put it in the chat box it is numbers 19 verse 6 okay numbers 19 verse 6 numbers 19 and verse 6 actually tells us that if you um, if you touch the dead body or uh, grave clothes uh, or coffin of a person then you have actually defiled yourself you have to ceremonially clean yourself now jesus was saying you are like graves which are unseen you actually make other people unclean when they walk on you without knowing ignorantly you know when they walk on you they become unclean the same thing happens when you they come in touch with your spirituality okay so they were defiling others whoever they came into contact with okay just like how walking over a grave would make a jewish person unclean the same way people would communicate with you and they would get unclean they would get spiritually blinded because of you guys see they get darkness because of you guys so jews had this uh, you know custom that they will make sure that the grave is seen by everybody by mistake also you should not walk and become make yourself unclean you should not walk on the grave and make yourself unclean so jesus is telling them you guys are the ones who are making other people defiled you are like spiritual graves you know you have you have things that are dead on the inside you have dirt on the inside you have so much of filth on the inside that when people come and talk to you you give them wrong advice and you corrupt them also see so you make them unclean with your wrong uh, you know teaching and that's what he condemns them for so one of the lawyers who were there lawyers are people who argue on spiritual matters you know people when they come with spiritual issues they explain from the word of god what is right and what is wrong and this lawyer was there he was one among the pharisees who were guest there he said when you condemn these pharisees teacher you are condemning us also you know and jesus immediately turned his focus onto them you know he was like asking for this from jesus no he should have just kept silent but he reminded jesus you know jesus you are actually attacking us also and jesus said, okay now let me actually attack you now and he turned around to him and said what to you teach us okay so he also received it now uh, uh, you know he was an expert in the law he was the one who interpreted the old testament he was telling them how to apply the law in their life and then jesus said you have interpreted the law incorrectly you know you are an expert in moses's law but you are giving them wrong ideas 
you're putting a heavy load on people and you don't even move a finger to help them with that load and he also says that you are people who don't practice the law yourself see that is where the danger is so they don't apply the law in their own lives and but they are telling other people you know they'll be like telling uh, saina you have to do this you have to do that and saina will say yes sir and saina will do it but this person will never do it in his own life you see the teacher will never practice it in his own life see so that is how the lawyers were doing lawyers of the law people who are supposed to you know argue their cases or solve their problems regarding the old testament their understanding of the old testament people who teach them that person himself was not practicing the commandments that are given in the law see on the sabbath day it is it is not it is forbidden to tie a knot okay you cannot tie a knot on the sabbath day that's a rule that the pharisees for it is not from the old testament it is their own you know the pharisees own they they made by, by themselves see when 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 you tie a knot actually when you uh, put you know wood in a cloth and then you tie a knot you can carry the bag you know as like a bag you can carry it so to prevent that they made a law that you could not tie a knot on the sabbath day so and uh, if you want to uh, raise a bucket from a well you could not do it why because on the day of the sabbath you could not tie the knot on the bucket see so all this uh, you know was was a oh, exactly. they would pick up the water the day the like the saturday or friday i guess you could do all the work on a saturday you know oh, no. so saturday is actually sabbath so they, you could actually do all this work on a friday so they, so they will pick up the water from the well on friday for saturday correct now jesus was not against picking up water you know you get the point so he was not against people doing that what he wanted was that see suppose if that is your work you must be given rest from your work so for that keep your sabbath day holy or separate from the other days so that you can actually sit at god's feet and learn you can spiritually you can think about your physical needs on all other days you can think about your, your spiritual need on the sabbath day that is why he said avoid all work on sabbath day but here they made it a thing that you know physically doing all these things will make you unclean on a sabbath but that was not the reason for uh, you know um, forbidding them from work on a sabbath day they did not understand the meaning of it but they were teaching other people the wrong things about how to observe the sabbath see uh, now uh, when when the rabbis uh, you know they obeyed the command for how to uh, do proper sanitation right in the army and the camp of israel they applied it only to jerusalem okay why because they said jerusalem is the camp of the lord <clears throat> so all the travel restrictions were given on sabbath day they could not go anywhere you know they could not even go to the bathroom if your bathroom is far away from your house you can't go to the bathroom on a sabbath day it was a horrible raw law you know if you interpret it that way and it is it is wrong to use the scripture as a tool to control and oppress other people you cannot use scripture like that that is a wrong way of, this is not a rule book this is not you know something you know some people have very big bibles like this you know and uh, uh, you use this bible to hit over on the head of somebody at home okay it hurts when you hit with a heavy book no same like that pharisees were hitting spiritually people with the law book and say idu pidichu thala ke otti adi amme inda thala potti nu remember say ah okay obey the law okay obey this law and it was so hurting and it was the wrong way of using the bible it was a wrong way of using the bible using the bible as a tool to control and oppress people is the wrong way to use your bible and the spiritual leaders were doing that and jesus says that's not the reason why this bible has been given that's not the reason why the word of god has been given see so jesus says what to you if you use your bible wrongly okay you interpret it wrongly and you apply it wrongly so be careful how you interpret and apply the bible in your life don't use it to control other people don't use it to manipulate people that is the wrong way of using your bible and then he says what to you for you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers kill them see now as religious people they should have been people who accepted the message of the prophets but what did their fathers do the previous generation people whenever they sent god sent any prophet to them they persecuted the prophets they hunted them they hurt them and some of them they killed also because they said oh no 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 we can't stand this message this message can't be from god but god was speaking to them god was saying repent change your evil wicked things you know you change 
but they will close their ears and they will kill the prophet see so uh, as pharisees they say oh no 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 we we respect all the prophets but jesus is saying no your forefathers kill the prophets you guys are changing their teaching also so you are burying the prophets see so the forefathers did not show any respect to the prophets who gave you the old testament and you guys are changing their message also you are burying the prophets you see so both ways you and your fathers are responsible for killing the prophets and burying them which means you are ignoring their teachings see you are avoiding their teachings now suppose you know you listen to this message and then you go and interpret the bible as you like fit you know you obey one commandment but you don't obey the other commandment then the then the problem comes that you also are selectively obedient you no know? i don't want to obey all that god commands me and that is also being like this pharisees so pharisees they change the teaching so that it would suit them their forefathers kill the prophets these people are changing the message so equally they are guilty like their forefathers so now they were physically the, the forefathers were physically rejecting the message of the prophets but these people were spiritually changing the message of the prophets so they are equally responsible they are equally responsible for persecuting the prophets and burying them then he says two people's names are mentioned there from the blood of abel to the blood of zechariah okay they are the martyrs from the old testament people who died for uh, you know god for proclaiming god's word so abel was the first prophet we don't know anything that abel spoke but jesus considered abel as the first prophet okay abel was the son of cain uh, sorry uh, um, uh, adam and eve cain and abel were the two sons of adam and eve and among them abel was the one who was killed by his brother and he says the blood of abel speaks so the martyrs who die for god they are they are not buried and forgotten no their blood still speaks god can hear their blood still speaking to him so they never die you know they live eternally so god can hear them speak to him so jesus says the first prophet was abel and actually in the last book of uh, i mean not in the last book uh, in the last book of the torah it's actually you know the person called zechariah it's uh, the last book of the old testament for the jew is from the history book second chronicles in second chronicles the last book of the hebrew bible zechariah story is given there second chronicles chapter 24 okay second chronicles chapter 24 the uh, what happens was zechariah was killed as a martyr in second chronicles chapter 24 and that's the last book of the hebrew bible so jesus says from abel the first martyr to the last martyr the blood uh, cries out yes uh, second chronicles uh, well, chapter 24 the whole chapter talks about how zechariah was killed okay that's your homework you can read it right so is this uh, in uh, in the book of genesis abel's blood cries out i'll show you that passage genesis 4 and verse 10 okay genesis 4 and verse 10 i'll put it in the chat box so you can see it control v genesis 4 Verse 10, Second Chronicles, 24th chapter. Okay, Second Chronicles, 24th chapter is death of Zechariah. Genesis chapter 4 <coughs> and verse 10 tells you how Abel's blood cries out. Abel, uh, uh, not this Abel from our Tammy Club. It is the Abel who is the son of Adam and Eve. Okay, chapter 4, verse 10. says it like this um where is it 10 and the lord said what have you done the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground so the prophet even though he dies his blood cries out to god god can he still hear his voice you see so he says why is the blood crying out for justice asking god lord i died for you you have to make sure that the person who killed me is punished he gets his justice you know what is deserving to him he will be given to him so abel's blood was crying out and zechariah's blood is also crying out jesus said 
all the prophets that your forefathers have killed you know their blood is crying out to me god sent them to israel with his word but what did israel do israel killed the prophets and jesus says the most terrible crime that you guys are doing is you are keeping people from coming to god you are keeping people from coming to god that is your crime your forefathers prevented god's word from coming to the people and you guys are also doing the same thing you are keeping the people from coming to the right understanding about god and that is your crime that is your crime that is why you are going to be judged that's what god is telling you finally <coughs> continue on to uh, verse 52 and 53 it says woe to you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge you did not enter in yourself and those who are entering you have hindered see so by obeying the bible incorrectly by interpreting the bible incorrectly <coughs> you are giving the people a list of rules you know and you yourself don't obey the rules but you are not helping the people by giving them the wrong set of rules or that's not the way to obey the bible you see by doing this and not doing that that is not the way to obey the bible so jesus says you are giving the wrong method to the people also so they also will not come to god you also will not come to god you don't enter in but you also hinder other people from going inside you know i i, I was at the railway station one day and there was a huge crowd wanting to board the janasadabdi express i was also there i had the ticket for the janasadabdi express and so many people were there at the platform when the train came in everybody rushed to the entrance of the compartment now the problem was there was a person who got into the this train by mistake okay he had one big suitcase and he entered into the train then somebody told him this is the wrong train so he said oh you 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 this is wrong train so i have to get off so he was trying to get off the train through the same entrance or the exit and we all were trying to get inside through the same exit now you should understand the train exit or the entrance has only room for one person at one time okay you can't enter in like uh, as a whole group so everybody was pushing from the back to enter in and this one man who was a giant man he was coming down with his suitcase and there was this block at the entrance and the janasa of the express express you know it only waits for 7 to 8 minutes in that platform and we were saying sir please move you want to get inside and the man was saying please move i want to get down and we had this pushing and pulling for 5 minutes and we were all stuck outside this man would not leave then if somebody said give him some room get the let the man get down and then everybody gave some room and this man got off then we were all pushing to get in at the same time nobody could get in you know because the entrance only fits one person so at last we said okay okay we need we need to be disciplined here but nobody was disciplining everybody is pushing each other and saying me first me first if i get in first you can get a good seat you know but all our seats are ready there everything is booked when we get in our seats will be empty we can easily sit there but nobody had the patience to wait suddenly the there is a policeman who was standing at the platform he took the stick and he said yendo ala ala mari age nikra and everybody was like okay 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 and we all lined up one by one we easily got in okay we could have done this earlier itself but the wrong way was trying to all enter by themselves nobody was entering and jesus was saying about something very similar you know they were preventing other people also from entering and they themselves were not entering okay so they were wrongly interpreting the word of god and wrongly teaching the word of god these people would never come to know god and they would not let other people also to know god now that is one of their woes so <clears throat> jesus after he taught this he left the place but what he taught did not leave their mind see if the right thought comes in this okay then if jesus said i am going to be judged by god i should change but instead they thought completely different how to kill jesus how to trap jesus how to accuse him see this is the thought that came to their hearts which shows that they did not want to change they refused correction you see they refused correction in the book of proverbs proverbs chapter 9 verse 8 and proverbs chapter 15 verse 12 i'm not going to read it because time is less i'll put it in the chat box so you can follow it up in the chat box i'll i'll paste it proverbs chapter 9 verse 8 and proverbs chapter 15 verse 12 says people who reject corruption oh, sorry 
uh, people who reject correction will be judged no. people who prevent corruption they hate people correct, correcting them they don't want to listen to that see so uh, if somebody is trying to correct them they say no 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 i don't want your correction okay i know i'm good i know i'll make it by myself see so they actually despise their own soul that's what proverb says okay they despise their own soul because you hate yourself only you hate correction okay so the character of those people who refuse correction one passage uh, in proverb says those who hate correction are stupid they are foolish okay they are foolish i think it's proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 says you are stupid and you're foolish if you hate correction so when the word of god tries to correct you you need to be wise accept the correction don't look at finding fault in other people try finding your own faults according to what the word of god reveals to us okay so it's easy for us to find you know what is wrong with i can easily find out what is wrong with uh, abel and joshua and you know sina and all that i can very easily find out but to find out my own mistakes and correct them that is very very difficult jesus says so jesus keeps on repeating woe to you woe to you what you're going to be judged god is going to divinely judge you guys for wrongly interpreting the word of god for wrongly teaching the word of god preventing people from coming to god and making it so that you guys yourself don't obey the scriptures but you force other people to obey the scriptures that too wrongly you know so jesus says god's judgment is going to come to you and when he tries to correct them he wants them to be saved he wants them to change but they think about how to catch him and how to kill him you see so they are they don't want correction they are very much happy they think that they themselves are very much correct that's a wrong attitude that's the attitude of a pharisee and don't use the scripture as a law book to hit people on their head and say okay do this do that don't do this don't do that that's not the way scripture is supposed to be used jesus was teaching them jesus was trying to correct them but they did refused correction that's why jesus was saying you know if the light in you is darkness how great is that darkness you want to make it so dark that you say that i can't see the truth when jesus was trying to give them the light they were rejecting the light so let them not be said about us let us not reject the light but let us accept the light of correction and let us change according to how jesus wants to change us let's pray heavenly father we thank you that you have a purpose in teaching us this truth help us to see the work of jesus and the words of jesus and to know that god loves us and wants us to walk in the truth he wants us to walk in the light lord even after hearing this let there not be the desire to avoid correction let there not be a desire in our hearts to misunderstand and misrepresent the bible the words of god help us to understand it correctly and apply it correctly in our lives help us not to harden our hearts like the hypocrites like the pharisees many a times we blame other people and their mistakes we find it very easily but we refuse to find out our own mistakes we don't come towards god and the heaven kingdom of heaven and we prevent other people also from entering into the kingdom help us not to be like that but to understand the word of god correctly and to apply the word of god correctly in our lives let god's name be glorified in and through each one of us in jesus name we pray Amen.